top U.S. commander in Afghanistan, now the second uh, powerful military force to surface in a scandal that's already taken down the former CIA director, David Petraeus. General John Allen is being investigated by the Pentagon for allegedly sending inappropriate messages to Jill Kelly. She's the woman behind the FBI investigation that uncovered the Petraeus affair with his biographer, Paula Broadwell. CNN's Joe Johns has just learned from a source familiar with Kelly's version of events that there was no sexual relationship with General Allen and that their communications were not of a sexual nature. And our correspondent Nick Payton Walsh is joining us from Beirut right now. Uh, Nick, you spent a lot of time in Afghanistan. You got to know General Allen. What have you heard over the past 24 hours, let's say, about this relationship, if in fact there was a relationship, with this woman, Jill Kelly, in Tampa? Well, I've spoken to a senior official close to General John Allen, and that man is absolutely explicit that there was no affair, there was nothing of a sexual nature between them or a romantic nature between them. In fact, this source goes on to say that General John Allen and Jill Kelly have never actually even been alone together, that in fact John Allen prefers to do most social activity with, with his wife in his company, he refers to Jill Kelly as in many ways a bored socialite. You knew many of the senior commanders at CENTCOM because of her role there as an honorary ambassador, working uh, in a social capacity, working in uh, programs to look after veterans on their return to the United States. At Absolutely clear that yes, well, emails were sent by her to both General John Allen's business and personal account, but they were almost entirely of an innocuous nature, not even really flirtatious language, my source goes on to say. Perhaps at some point General John Allen may have said, thanks, sweetheart, but he says, look, he's from Virginia. That's often how people there colloquially will refer to somebody else. And she may have at once said, look, you know, you look great on television last night. But it wasn't as though there was a, a flirtatious exchange between the two. Absolutely clear, this source is that there's nothing of a sexual nature here. Well, why are we in this situation, Wolf? Why are the FBI paying such close attention? This source says that General John Allen received an, an email from this uh, anonymous account, allegedly run by Paula Broadwell, warning her about Jill, warning him about Jill Kelly. Now, he, of course, knowing Jill Kelly, wrote to her to say, look, I've received this email talking badly about you, even threatening you in some ways. You should know about it. Now, we don't know what happened then. It may be that that's when she first contacted an FBI agent. That's not entirely clear. But that seems to be the source of the FBI's interest in these email exchanges. Now, we talk about 20 to 30,000 documents. My source says that's far much an exaggeration. Of course, he says General John Allen does reply almost religiously to every email he's sent, and that could be why there's such a volume of traffic here. But above of all, he's clear. It's pr innocuous in its content. There's not flirtatious language. That's really worth giving you, I think, a, a rare glimpse of the other side of the fence here. We haven't heard from General John Allen, but that's a, and a senior official close to him. But the news that you're reporting, Nick, is that General Allen received an anonymous email, but later discovered to be from Paula Broadwell, warning him, stay away from this other woman, Jill Kelly. Is that, is that what I heard you say? That's correct, that's correct. And that, of course, is when he notified Jill Kelly, and that perhaps where this involvement in the FBI began. I'm speculating purely there, but that appears to be how the FBI got brought into this and how General John Allen got dragged into the situation which led to the resignation uh, of General uh, David Petraeus from the CIA. Now, you know General Allen from your coverage of the war in Afghanistan. Give us a little sense of, of who this general is. A man greatly respected by many of those who work around him. From my dealings with him, it was interesting. I mean, the man is supposed to be a salesman, a PR master in many ways, selling you an, a war that on many different fronts is failing, having many different difficulties. But when you talk to him, it was a, you were aware that he had acute understanding of the problems. He wasn't really glossing over the issues. He didn't know what needed to be changed there. But in many ways, a man facing a very difficult task, the major decisions about pace of troop withdrawal, what to be done on the ground, decided for him by Washington and he simply the implementer trying to draw down a messy decade-long war but he was also a man who did inspire great loyalty amongst those around him. I remember one aide I spoke to uh, who said that, you know, he'd done many tours in Afghanistan, didn't really want to go to, uh, to uh, tours in Iraq, didn't really want to go to Afghanistan, but he would serve if General John Allen asked him to. That call came through, and he explained to me that kind of loyalty came from one anecdote. He and General Allen were sat in Iraq at a dining facility. A round came near that building, shook it, and a young soldier dived underneath the table for cover. Well, John Allen stayed calmly in his seat, leant down, and said, son, 
you're not going to win the war from down there. Now, that's really just a, a small taste, I think, of what one person explained to me was a reason why they were inspired by him, and I'm sure why, when this news broke this morning, it surprised an awful lot of people with close knowledge of John Allen. Wolf? Nick Payton Walsh, uh, thanks for the good reporting. Really appreciate it. And joining us now to talk a little bit more about what's going on, the former Democratic Congresswoman from California, Jane Harmon. She's now director, president, and CEO of the Woodrow Wilson Center here in Washington. Uh, thanks very much, Jane, for coming in. Thank you. Welcome. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on, because you were a member of the House Intelligence Committee for a long time. I interviewed Dianne Feinstein, the chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee. She's not very happy that she learned about all of this from news media inquiries. Listen to what she told me. And it's rather shocking uh, to find out, candidly, that we weren't briefed and that we find out from the press in the way in which we did, with no heads up, with no opportunity to ask questions or put together any information. Are you surprised, as shocked as I was, that the chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee learns that General Petraeus is being investigated when reporters start calling up her office? Yes, there's a lot we don't know about the process here, but let's start with something I think you said earlier, Wolf, which is that private, consensual, sexual affairs should be off limits. I don't see that Congress needs to know about those. Uh, I don't see that they need to take up this much time on the media, frankly, when it, there are important things going on around the world. Uh, but nonetheless, he the resigned, process though. here, he, he the process he... here is, is confusing. Yes, once he resigned, absolutely, the facts need to be known. Because uh, it's not every day a CIA director resigns in the midst of, of a sexual scandal. Right, but rolling back the tape here, best as we can tell, this started as uh, an investigation into cyber stalking, alleged cyber stalking by Paula Broadwell. And through that investigation by the FBI, which I assume was handled according to FBI rules, cyber stalking is a potential crime. Right. Uh, the, the, the connection to Petraeus was discovered. At that point, if the FBI is investing, investigating criminal activity, informing other people could blow their investigation. So I don't know at that point whether there was any obligation to disclose. And I think their position is there was not an obligation to But there was anyone. this FBI agent in Tampa who alerted this Republican congressman that, at right. the end of October from Washington and State who in, told, who in turn told Eric right. Cantor who went to the Justice Department, the FBI, and then all of a sudden this thing exploded. Well, again, I don't know exactly what happened. Who went, who informed the FBI or asked whether there was a Did reason this, for Congress to know. Based on what you know, know, and you were a longtime member of the Homeland Security Committee, the, the House Intelligence Committee, did this FBI agent by blowing the whistle or whatever he did to this Republican congressman from Washington State, Dave Reichert, did he do anything wrong? That's what we have to find out. I think Dianne Feinstein is right to be miffed. I think that she and Saxby Chambliss uh, should and will hold closed door hearings and get all the facts. We don't know what the facts are. That's one part of the FBI story that we don't understand. The second part is, why were they briefing Jim Clapper on Election Day? That may have just been a coincidence. Jim Clapper, the director of national intelligence. Again, when did this investigation of a potential cybercrime become something else? And if there were no national security implications, uh, what, what, what were they doing uh, telling Clapper and then Clapper volunteered to Petraeus that he should have stepped aside? It's, it's pretty shocking to me, too, and she said this, Diane Feinstein, that, that she only learned that David Petraeus, as the CIA director, went to Benghazi, went to Libya. She only learned it from Bob Woodward of the Washington Post. Well, that seems strange, although I don't know why, what his obligation is to share his travel plans with her unless she was asking for his travel plans. I think she may have been asking and not receiving the information. Uh, I don't know that, but, but they, they do work in, in separate branches of government, and, and her job as an overseer is an important job. I had the, well, I was the ranking member, she's the chairman, but I was the ranking member on the House side for a long time, and it demanded to be briefed by the administration. But, couple of other points, full disclosure. Okay. Dave, now, you're a member of the External Advisory Board of the CIA, and you've worked closely with General Petraeus over there. the years. Yes. Uh, I've worked closely with him. I met him through my professional duties, and we have a long professional and now a, a social relationship. Dave and, and Holly Petraeus Holly. are my friends. Have you uh, spoken to them since this? I all have. Uh, yes, I have spoken to him. I have very high regard for her. I hope we will all give them some personal space to deal with what is obviously a, a very difficult moment in their family. Uh, I also hope that Congress will exercise its appropriate responsibilities uh, as the uh, 
uh, legislative branch, uh, Article One of our Constitution, to get all the information. Um, but I'm I'm guessing when we're finally through this whole thing uh, that there may be less than meets the eye. Uh, so David, should he have resigned? Well, that's his call. He was advised to resign, so Is I. Is that read, appropriate for um, the General Clapper, the head of and uh, the, the the Director of National in Intelligence, to tell him to resign? I think we. I think you'd have to ask Clapper that, but I think we need full, inf much more full information than at least I have uh, to decide that. I just want to say, though, while we're talking about this, hardworking, outstanding people at the CIA and at DOD, talking about the General Allen issue, are hard at work for keeping our country safe, and the message needs to go out to them. Uh, that the government stands behind them, that to the extent there are any transitions here, they will be orderly. There are very, very solid, serious, appropriate successors to David uh, Petraeus being considered by the White House. As soon as he resigned on Friday, your name came up immediately as potentially a CIA director. There's never been a woman who's been the head of the CIA. Is that something you would be interested in? I have a terrific job at the I know Wilson you do, Center. but is I that something you, for would you be years. interested in being CIA uh, director? It's flattering to be considered. My prediction is that one of the inside uh, people, either Mike Morrell, who's, who's, the, the, acting who's the acting director and is excellent, or John Brennan, who's also rumored to be at least under consideration, uh, would will probably be asked. And either of them would do an excellent, excellent job. And there needs to be stability. And one final point about David Petraeus's performance as CIA director. That's something I really know about. I know about 14 his, months he was director of the CIA. As, as director of ISAF in Afghanistan and before that as a CENTCOM commander. Uh, this is an enormously talented man. He brought a different style to the CIA than did uh, Leon Panetta. But he was hard at work uh, bringing an, an enormous strategic sense to understanding the dangerous parts of the world. And the CIA is a big positive contributor to our intelligence community, which operates a lot better since we uh, reformed it in 2004 and created a joint command across 16 agencies. And the CIA uh, is indispensable. In, in the effort to uh, prevent uh, uh, terror attacks on our country. You once said, and I'm quoting you now, you once said, I live and breathe security 24-7. If they come around and ask you to be the director of the CIA, I live and you'll have that opportunity issues, to and live and breathe security 24-7. I will live and breathe them at the Wilson Center and as a member of the external board, if, if uh, Dave Petraeus' his successor keeps me on. And I, I really think this is a, a, a critical time for our country. And we need to talk about organizing the opposition in Syria, which, if it happens, will be a great contribution of Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. We'll have plenty of opportunities to talk about Syria and other issues down the road as well. Jane Harmon, thanks very Thank much for both. coming in. Did the FBI end up investigating something that amounted to nothing? Up next, the why some are now suggesting General David Petraeus' downfall wasn't deserved also. Affairs, sex crimes, embezzlement. We're taking a closer look at a string of recent scandals that have been plaguing the U.S. military's highest ranks.